Hello everyone, I am Dr. Manza. I want to tell you all today about uh, recurrent pregnancy loss. So recurrent pregnancy loss means having repeated abortions. Most often these happen within two and a half or three months of pregnancy itself. So when it happens more than twice consecutively, then we call it recurrent pregnancy loss. So as you can imagine, this can be very stressful for the couple. It can be associated with a lot of anxiety about whether you should plan your pregnancy next. If you do become pregnant, whether, whether that pregnancy will continue further, all of uh, this anxiety and fear is what is associated with recurrent pregnancy loss. Now, uh, the causes for this recurrent pregnancy loss are several. I will tell you about each one of them in detail. So the first and most common one is genetic abnormalities. Genetic abnormalities means that the DNA formation of the baby is not good. Chromosomal abnormalities what we call. So the DNA structure or the DNA makeup of the baby will not be good because of which it won't form normally and when it doesn't form normally it cannot grow to a larger size. So this is what uh, results in early pregnancy losses. These things mostly happen at one and a half months, two months, two and a half months itself. They don't go, grow beyond that. And uh, so when such things happen, you might wonder if something is wrong with you, with e either of the couple that is. But uh, most often these genetic abnormalities are only in the baby. It does not mean that something is wrong with the couple. But to know whether the problem is with the baby or the parents, we do something called as chromosomal analysis, DNA study of the baby basically. So whenever somebody has an abortion, we collect that fetal tissue, the product that gets aborted. We take that uh, baby tissue and uh, we send it for chromosomal analysis, that is the DNA study. And if the report comes abnormal, then we go ahead and test the parents. If the report does not come abnormal, then it is alright, it is not a DNA problem. But if the baby's DNA structure is abnormal, then we test the parents individually, see whose side the abnormal DNA is coming from and then decide treatments accordingly. So depending on whether the problem is with the baby's DNA or whether it is the parental DNA, there are several modes of treatments ahead. I will not go into the details of those now. And we can discuss with the couple what is the problem, where the problem is and what the solution can be for this. It does not mean that you cannot have a baby at all. This is the first cause, that is the genetic abnormalities. The second cause commonly is anatomical mal malformations in the uterus, that is in your womb. The formation of the womb itself will be a little abnormal. The shape of the womb will be a little abnormal. In these kind of uh, situations, the baby when it tries to attach into the womb, it won't be able to attach properly because the shape of the womb is a little abnormal. So it won't be able to attach and even if it does attach, it won't be able to grow, which is why it gradually as the size increases falls off. So this is the second most common cause. There are sur some surgical treatments for this. Depending on what the problem is, there are several types of anatomical malformations in the uterus, that is the womb again. So depending on what the cause is, the type of surgery will change and we can make changes in the shape of the uterus, change the structure of the womb so that it can inhabit a growing embryo well. This is the second cause. Third cause is that there must be some problem in the blood clotting mechanism. So when I say blood clotting mechanism, some uh, mothers have a tendency of uh, their blood clotting very fast and very soon and even in the small blood vessels. Normally blood should flow freely all through the body, even in the tiniest of tiny vessels, blood should flow freely. But if there is a condition called APLA, what we call it, anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome, in this condition blood does not flow, flow freely and in the smaller vessels there is a tendency to uh, clot. So in the womb, in the placenta through which the blood has to reach the baby, the vessels are very small. So through those small vessels, enough blood is not able to reach the baby and because of this, the baby can uh, not grow further in size or it can abort because of absence of blood. Absence of blood means also absence of oxygen for the baby. So it will not grow further and it will abort. For this, there is a treatment again. Here we give the mother blood thinners. Blood thinners will prevent that clotting and mother will have to use these blood thinners all throughout the pregnancy. So there is a solution for this too. But uh, the, this disease can only be diagnosed before the mother is pregnant, not after she is already pregnant. The test won't be reliable after she is already pregnant. So based on this, you must have understood that most of uh, these causes can be prevented. But to be able to prevent them, we need to see a woman before she conceives. 
what we do there is when we see you before pregnancy you when you come and tell us that you have had two miscarriages already and you're you, you want to have another baby so we do all of these tests we evaluate everything make sure everything is normal if something needs to be treated we treat it beforehand and then we ask you on certain medications we put you and then we ask you to plan conceiving again